Friends, I have created an awesome SimLab marble mechanism. I got a challenge for you, so let's get cracking. So I am giving this file away free. You'll be able to find it in the description in the video, but you can also visit my website, ahlmodtech.com. Of course, I've got the page dedicated to Tinkercad. Tons of amazing categories, and below that, the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. Today, we're going to use the HLMT23 tag, new shares link to find the project. When you click on that, you'll be able to see all the amazing projects that are shared using the HLMT23 tag. And of course, that'll also take you to the SimLab auger mechanism. Friends, it is set to copy and tinker, so don't forget the golden rule of Tinkercad. Give a reaction before you copy and tinker. So friends, this is the fun part of Tinkercad. You can keep trying ideas again and again as you come up with cooler and cooler ideas. I started over here with what's called the DNA and I made a little ball maze that worked okay. I tried to make it better and then I decided, hey, I could make a smarter auger and then finally, I came up with this final auger that I want to share with you. Friends, real quickly, I'll take you into SimLab so you can see how this works. When you click on SimLab, you'll see all the geometry becoming finalized. You do need to wait for that to happen. And then these connectors now are motors. So you can see I have set the torque on everything. And when we hit play, you get to see everything moving. We've got cool things over here. You can see the balls are being augered down the line. I've got them being augered vertically. This was all kind of ish. This is working absolutely perfect. The only thing I haven't solved is how to get the next ball to come in at the bottom of this auger. So that is the challenge, is I'd like to see you work on mechanisms and come up with a way to make that happen. Of course, when you've got your auger mastered, you can post it public to the HLMT23 tag so I can check it out. If this is your first time using SimLab, I've got some absolute beginner tutorials. I will put them in the cards right up here so that you can track them down. If you played with it a little bit before, let me show you how this all works. We cannot edit in SimLab. We can copy and paste, control C and control V, and then you can use the arrow keys to click on it and nudge, but we cannot really edit until we go back to the main design area. So let me show you this auger mechanism. I'm going to click on one and do control D to duplicate, shift nudge to move it over. Notice it is grouped, so I'm going to ungroup it. Now the secret to this project, first I wanted a size 5 sphere and I found the screw threads. Huge shout out to ZDP for sharing these with me. They are absolutely awesome. I was able to set these gaps so they were about the exact same size as the sphere. And that is where the process started to work. So I used 1, 3, 0.5 for the inner thread height, 0.25 for the outer thread height. I, I used guess and check to find 7 turns, 64 sides, and that total height of 40 matched it to the length of my cylinder. Now I left the direction as counterclockwise. You could fiddle with that if you want yours to work in a different way. Once I was done with that, I could do control G to group. All right, so let me show you how we make it move. The first thing we do is we go to SimLab and we bring out what's called an axle. We wanna cruise it on the end of our auger and then I'm gonna select those two pieces. Notice I'm just doing a little sliver, two shapes, L for a line, and we want it to be in the middle of the auger. So the auger is the master, and we want to do center and center. If we click somewhere else, we can now click on our motor, and we want to connect it to the auger. We do want to maximize the torque, and then I'm going to tell you just for fun, we are going to go to 400 for the speed. I do want to highlight that since we left this one connected in 3D space, this part will simply float wherever we built it. That means the other part of it will be put in the sky. Let's bring a sphere over here by doing Control D, Shift Nudge, and I'll bring it back just a few clicks. And of course, I do need to add my rails. I will show you these as well. It was simply a cylinder. I'm going to ungroup it. 
And then I took that cylinder and I squoze it down and put it at a little bit of an angle so that it would hold the balls. I'll even leave those separate just so I can show you this next feature. Right now though, we are gonna move to SimLab, wait for that geometry to become finalized. And then if you click on an item, right here it was gonna move, but I'm now gonna make that static. See how it's got a blue outline? That way it stays in place we want this one to spin, so we're going to leave it able to spin. Now when we hit play, we'll be able to see how our mechanism works. Now the speed of 400 was so fast that it shot it out of there. So I'm going to hit reset. Let's go back to our speed, and I'm going to go back to the numbers that I was using with the project. So down closer to 100, notice it shows the way it's going to rotate too. If we want to go the other direction, we can go negative. <laughs> So that time I even missed. Let's switch to isometric. Let's look at this from the top. And of course I need to reset. And I'm gonna nudge this a few clicks this way. I'm gonna switch back to perspective view. Lower that down so it doesn't bounce maybe so much. And now let's hit play and check it one more time. Bingo, it is working just as it was advertised. So everybody, there you have it, a fun auger mechanism you can work with. Of course, when you make something awesome or when you wanna make adjustments, don't forget, move back to the 3D design, make all your changes and then go back and test. When you're finally done, you can share what you made with me. It is so simple. Return to the desktop, then simply click right here on the gear, click on the properties, of course, make a better name. You can also add an awesome description. And then you've got to tag it with HLMT23. That is the best way to reach me. Of course, you can add other tags. Make sure the design is public. Finally, leave it as share alike. And then simply save changes. Of course, you may have to prove you're not a robot before you can really click save changes. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to remind you about my website, hlmodtech.com. Of course, I've got the page dedicated to Tinkercad with tons of amazing categories. Below that, you'll find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. If you scroll down just a little bit more, you will find my course, Tinkercad in 20 Days. It is hosted on cadclass.org. If you check this video, it explains all about it. And if you check the bottom, you will find a coupon code 25HL Tinkercad. It will get you 25% off any course on the site. Of course, you can visit the site by simply clicking the link. Friends, of course, I do want to remind you about the sweet built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. I also want to highlight the Tinkercad Community Discord. As you can see, there are a boatload of members and it is a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget to absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me. HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.